Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Daniel and welcome to my channel. And tonight, I have my cherry wine that's finally bottled. It took quite some time to clear, at least for me. It really wasn't that long, but now that it's time for me to finally taste it, I just wanted to share this moment with all of you. My whole goal for this video is to taste this cherry wine. I have my notes that I've been taking on the process of making this cherry wine. I kind of want to talk about my expectations, then I want to taste it, see if my expectations are right, and then talk about how I want to improve. I'm fairly new at winemaking. I haven't been doing this for all too long. I've only made so many batches. So with these batches, I want to be extra critical so that I can catch the mistakes that I've been making as early as possible so that all my future bottles of wine are excellent. So before we dive right on in, you know the drill. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the video where I actually make this cherry wine so that if you have not seen that yet, you can go ahead and watch it. It was a fairly basic recipe, but now all of my hard work is done and I get to enjoy the fruits of my labor. So before I taste it, let's go ahead and kind of talk about what happened with this cherry wine. So I started this cherry wine on March 27th, and then I finally bottled it about a week ago. So maybe June, halfway through June. So that is April, May, two and a half months, which is not very long at all. Some people let their wine sit for a whole year before they even look at it, but two and a half months from starting to bottling is not very long, and I made sure that it cleared all the way as well. Starting off with this wine, my specific gravity was 1.120. Now, if you don't know a lot about specific gravity, um, it really is a measurement that winemakers use to kind of guess what your alcohol content is going to be whenever your wine is finished. 1.120 is super high. I knew the risk of starting that high. I kind of just want to see, I thought it would be kind of fun to see how high of an alcohol content I could get because my whole goal is to share this wine with my friends and enjoy ourselves as we drink it. And so I thought it would be kind of fun, but I'm also sort of scared because I think that the alcohol content is going to overpower the flavor and we're not going to be able to enjoy it as much. Besides that, there was nothing really strange about the process. On April 6th, my specific gravity was 0.992 which means that that yeast did a killer job. I used an equation to figure out the alcohol content and it said this was at 18%. Now I did back sweeten it so that would have changed it and brought it down just a little bit, but I back sweetened it, degassed it, stabilized it. I racked it over until it was clear and now we have this finished product. It's bottled. I went all out with the label design. I'll throw that up on the screen so that you can see it. And overall, I'm super happy with the way everything looks. This is just a recycled wine bottle that I sanitize and clean properly. And then so far, I've been getting four full bottles whenever I finish up my one gallon of wine. And then I just put the rest in one of these bad boys because I don't get a full bottle and I just throw it right in the fridge. So now that all of that rambling's out of the way, let's taste this wine. Disclaimer, I'm not a sommelier. I'm some dude that makes wine. I don't know all the magical terms to describe wine, but I do enjoy wine. And so I can say what I like, I can say what I don't like, and I can talk about what I'm experiencing. So one thing right off the bat, one thing I'm happy about is that it's clear. It looks presentable. The smell is not overpowering whatsoever, which is something that I'm very happy about because I was afraid that I was gonna smell it and it was gonna be like smelling diesel. So I said I back sweetened it. I back sweetened it with the same cherry juice that I used in the video where I made this to make this, which I think really helped maintain the body and the flavor of the wine. My fear of this being way too potent and not enjoyable, I'm not getting that right now. Yes, you can definitely tell it's a higher alcohol content, 
but I did back sweeten it, which would have brought it a little bit down from that 18%, and this tastes amazing. I think this is something that you could definitely pour and enjoy, and it's not really difficult going down. The smell, which is the thing that comes right before taste, I'm also very happy about. It's aromatic, it smells sweet, and it's not overpowering or pungent. The flavor, the high alcohol content is there, but there is still plenty of body and flavor from the juice that I use that it is not overpowering and it actually tastes fantastic. So that's the color, that's the smell, that's the flavor. What would I do differently? If I were to do anything differently, I would lower the amount of sugar that I started out with. I would not have my specific gravity at 1.120. I'd probably have it about 1.070. I just think that you end up with a more mellow wine that your average wine drinker could enjoy. Maybe I'm just more used to consuming jet fuel and that's why it's not so pungent to me. I have had other people comment that my wines are too strong. I think this is amazing. If you like a stronger wine, having that high specific gravity to begin with, go for it because the flavor is not ruined. It's not bitter, it's not pungent, it's not obnoxious like I thought it would be. And so overall, I'm completely pleased, but if I were to change anything, it would just be starting at a lower specific gravity. I would add less sugar. I use two pounds of sugar. Maybe I'll use one and a half pounds of sugar. Maybe I'll use one pound of sugar because I am using a whole quart of juice, which is adding a substantial amount of sugar already. So I would definitely just kind of go slow with the sugar and work my way up to 1.060, 1.070, maybe 1.080. Definitely not anywhere near 1.1. I think that I'm gonna stay away from there from now on. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys could be with me as I taste and enjoy my creation. I think it's so amazing that I can put some ingredients into a bucket and then a few months later have my own homemade bottle of cherry wine. Um, the whole label making process, that's completely on you, on your imagination. This is just label paper that I made a design on and printed it out, um, and I think it looks awesome. I think that if I gave this to somebody, it looks professional, it tastes good, it's just a super fun thing to make my, for myself or to give out as a gift. So I'm super pleased. I hope that this is motivating you to be imaginative, to want to do more and make more things for yourself, because there's few things that are as satisfying as putting in the work for yourself, making something for yourself, and having a satisfying end product. So thank you once again for being here with me on this journey. Um, I hope that you are staying curious and creative in your winemaking process. I can't wait to put out my next video, but until then, happy brewing.